So, I have been playing the Digimon TCG for the better part of three months now, and I have participated in four different online tournaments. In these tournaments, I've gotten second place using purple, second place using yellow, second place using blue, and today I have finally broken that curse and gotten first place using green. Let's talk about it. Welcome back everyone, my name is Steven Rodriguez, I'm your true champion, and that's right, in today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you guys my broken, insane, turbo green deck list that I used to get first place in this past weekend's DigiDuel tournament that was hosted by my boy Drago from the Digimon TCG Discord server. Honestly guys, I'm just so amazed with my performance, and it just means the world to me that I was able to do it with a green deck, because fun fact for you guys, the very first deck list that I posted on this channel for the Digimon TCG was a green deck deck list and the fact that I was able to kind of bring it full circle for this really awesome poetic win means the world to me and I'm just going to be smiling throughout the entire video. I've been raving about how amazing green set 3 is for the longest time now and the fact that I can show you guys not only this list that I built myself but also give you the results to back up how powerful I think this color is in this format is just going to be so amazing and I think really good for you for moving forward within this meta of the Digimon TCG. If you guys are excited for the continuation of some awesome Digimon content here on the channel be sure to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, and click that bell for notifications so you know when my videos go live for you. I think something like 60-ish percent of you guys actually aren't subscribed that watch these videos so just know that I do post videos on the Digimon TCG every single week along with all kinds of other TCG and anime related content so if that kind of stuff interests you just know that subscribing is always an option. And if there's anything in this video you wish to discuss more with me or you want me to kind of elaborate on feel free to follow me over on Twitch. I do go live every Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. I spend a lot of time in just chatting so come stop by hang out ask some questions and hopefully get some live answers from me. It's always a fun time over there and I love talking about this game with you guys. Links down below as always. But with all that being said boys and girls I think it's time we actually hopped into Tabletop Simulator and took a look at my super broken turbo green Saris mod deck list for the set 3 format in the Digimon TCG. All right boys and girls let's begin. First things first, as always, when it comes to our deck list here in the Digimon TCG, we are going to be starting with our level twos. We are playing three Argomon Baby and two Minomon. Now, in my opinion, Argomon is by far the best level two for green right now. Getting that in free memory during your active phase, if any of your dudes stay in play, the absolute amazing synergy with download is super awesome and because you're constantly killing your opponent's digimon they sometimes cannot respond to you unless they have removal cards in their hand like terra force or kaida's breath so that plus memory is almost guaranteed if you get a download off during your turn which is super nice and this is going to be the kind of the start to our tech cards in the deck if i had it my way i would play only one minomon in my deck but i'm playing two because i'm really worried about the red onion matchup i told you guys that, that deck was the best deck in the format and it's the one matchup that green has right now that is kind of really tough to deal with so I'm kind of playing a really heavy engine in terms of plus DP cards like Kabuterimon, Gargamon, and even Rapidmon plus Minomon here to be able to swing over bigger Digimon like Omnimon. So Minomon says when attacking if this card is attacking an opponent's Digimon plus 1000 DP until end of turn it's probably the best plus 1000 generic card we have in the game. I am a big fan of Freemon but on the off chance that your opponent doesn't have you know two Digimon in play against Omnimon I want to have a more consistent option and Minomon is that option. I will say this card does come in handy just in general because our main way of sort of getting rid of our opponent's board is just attacking into things. So making sure your dudes are always bigger than them is super nice. Moving on to my favorite part of any deck, we have the level threes. Now, as you guys know, my last green type profile was pretty cool because it had 18 rookies in it. This one isn't nearly as big. It's playing 16, but it's still a pretty high number. Now, a thing I kind of wanted to talk about before I move into what cards I'm specifically playing is a lot of you guys saw that 18 number and thought, oh, it's just a rookie rush deck. I'm I'm like, uh, were you not watching the deck list? Did you not listen to why we play 18 rookies? The reality is we're not actually playing this many rookies so we can just spam the board and have a bunch of dudes and play and attack with them. The reality is the more dudes you have on your board, the more dudes you can rest for cards like hidden potential and for download. So in reality, if I have a two cost Galvimon in my hand and a Argomon in my hand, but I have no other cards in play, it's actually cheaper for me just to call this Galvimon, rest that in play, and then evolve whatever level four I have into this Argomon than it is just to evolve the Argomon hard. So having this many rookies not only has good synergy with download itself, but also plays into our Argomon level 5's ability to spam the board. So while you can spam the board with these cards, and they can lead to a really good way for you to sort of win condition your opponent, the main idea of them is to always have cards on your side of the field that you can rest for download. 
for that reason and that reason alone we're playing a full 10 count of two drop vanilla level threes um, i'm including the eight of the three dp1 and two of the brand new five dp1 in aruramon people were actually seeing this card and like whoa that's crazy having a level three digimon that can swing over most level fours is honestly super insane especially when you can rest them using sarasmon's effect and your download cards honestly i would not change this lineup in my life it, it, it works so well having 10 is such a great number for vanillas uh moving on to our level threes with abilities we have simply our 1000 dp agumon the best generic level three in green right now really consistent really good and a two of of terriamon this was kind of a meta call i thought everyone and their mom was gonna be playing some form of ragnar Lodemon. so having this in our deck to sort of counter that i thought was gonna be super nice plus i was still a little afraid of blue so being able to turn off uh cards like vulcan's hammer or goemon is super nice Honestly, this Terriermon might as well have been a Tentomon instead, so that way I could rest more dudes on my opponent's side of the board and just get more and more removal, but uh, it did come in clutch every now and then. Moving on to level fours, again, I had to make some sacrifices here. I talked about how the worst thing about green right now in set three is that you have too many options for cards. Like you literally have so many good things you want to play, but you can't fit them all in a 50 card list. So the level fours is really where that room comes in. Like I said, I was really, really worried about the Omnimon matchup. So I was making sure that I played at least four copies of Kabuterimon and at least one copy of Gargamon. The reason why you play more Kabuterimon as opposed to Gargamon is because if you have just just this in play versus having this in play uh you can protect yourself against volcanic Dramon. if you have a bunch of these in play you can get punished really hard by volcanic Dramon. so having the 5000 dp actually matters here on kabuterimon i'm then playing four copies of woodmon because you kind of have to being the only blocker in the deck i am gonna maybe experiment in the future uh cutting blockers from my green list because i'm gonna be honest with you guys most of my games came down to one of two factors either i had a full board and i just eventually outrun my opponent because i was just killing all their dudes or i had no board because of dead drawing and not being able to do anything that i just lost anyway so i'm not actually sure if blockers belong in the deck i will say that these being 6000 dp beaters is actually super nice for the alter s matchup but other than that they honestly didn't really do anything for me but for now i'm playing them because having some way to protect yourself is pretty nice in case there's any sticky situations out there and rounding off we sort of have our tech level fours i'm playing only two vegemon this hurts my heart as much as as much as it does yours i'm a big big vegemon fan especially in alter s format making sure that you have as many strong level fours as possible sort of counter that board wipe is really nice um two togemon you'll see later that i'm playing a bunch of level threes a bunch of level fours but not that many level fives or sixes so being able to dig for the ones you want in the late game is super nice slash digging for your serismon your puppet mons or your level fives in the early game Game can help too every now and then honestly togemon came in super clutch uh in terms of being a consistency card that i don't feel like i'm gonna cut anytime soon but a card that i really want to find room for in this deck is stingmon i think stingmon can create so much value for you in green it's not even funny but i was too afraid of animon to try and put it in the list i might try and work it in moving forward uh moving on we have level fives again you're gonna see some more interesting decisions here um i wanted to include rapidmon in the deck so badly that i had to end up cutting one argomon and one blossomon i was originally playing a a full four of all the down to level fives because these are the best ones uh being able to kind of cheat in your level sixes is just too strong um on turn two but i will say that i saw these guys plenty and running this fun three three split here for the difference in power was honestly super cool we have three argomon level five arguably the best level five in green and then we have three blossomon uh for the 7000 dp it did come in clutch every now and then to swing over certain things slash not be swung at during your opponent's turn if you didn't have a level six to evolve into uh that same turn moving on to rabbitmon like i said i wanted to have a really good animon matchup and the best way to sort of guarantee a good one is by having tons of power gainers in your deck so you can always swing over animon slash swing over the level sixes if you rest them early um and so having this card was super clutch and a weird thing that actually came up with this card was kind of twofold the first one was that i ended up only having cards in my raising area and so i couldn't download and if you've ever like hard played an argomon or just downloaded for the full three costs you know it kind of sucks and feels bad because it could have been free so having this like just free two drop evolution that i knew gave me value and kind of either choked my opponent at one or was just a really good card to play on my turn that I couldn't get responded to in the raising area was honestly super nice and refreshing to have in the deck and honestly gave me some really cool value turns 
The second thing that I noticed about this card was that it's a six cost. Six cost level five is actually pretty balanced in Digimon right now. The lowest you have is kind of five drops. So um, where Argamon's eight and Blossomon's seven, this is just six. So if my opponent ever just gives me five during my turn, I don't want to like overextend or I don't have to. I can just drop this, give them one, make my board wider and stronger. And it's honestly super cool. I definitely like how it performed for me, both for consistency purposes and for just offensive purposes as well. Okay, moving on to the bread and butter of my deck. We have the level sixes. First things first, we have the queen of green herself, Sarismon. All right, if you guys don't know what she does, she's a 12,000 DP, 12 cost, five cost EVA level five. Those stats, you're like, whoa, this card can't be good. But then you look, she has download three, so that justifies the uh, five cost already. And she has a really amazing uh, skill. Your turn, once per turn, you may rest your opponent's Digimon instead of your own when using download. Fun facts about this effect. It is not a hard once per turn. Therefore, if you have multiple copies of Sarismon, you can use the effect multiple times. So if you already have a Sarismon in play, you can rest your opponent's Digimon to play another Sarismon from your hand, and then you can play another download card from your hand if you have another Sarismon. Mon. There was actually one game where I had my one Sarismon. I had three level fives in play. My opponent had three Digimon. Here's what I did. <laughs> I went rest your dude, play Sarismon. Rest your dude, play Sarismon. Play hidden potential discovered, play Sarismon. I had four Sarismons in play uh, in one turn and I swung with them out for game. It was honestly so, so, so much fun. Um, I cleared his board in the process as well. So having this card just to flood your board slash have some controlling options against your opponent is honestly insane. Not only is this deck turbo, but it's also kind of controlly and disrupty thanks to download. So this was the main bread and butter of the deck. Let's talk about some of the tech level sixes that I ended up playing. First things first, like I said, the one matchup that I was concerned about was Animon, and the best Animon check in the game happens to be in green in the form of Boncho Stingmon. This card is just stats on stats on stats. I know you're gonna see the 9,000 DP and the 12 cost, and you're gonna be like, what, this card sucks. First of all, three cost to evolve Evo actually not that bad there are some scenarios where this is actually a really good evo cost for a level six that you can just kind of pass your turn given one memory if you don't have anything going on so when you're like dead drawing bond is actually a really cool card to see when you're just like grinding up to level six and his actual stats are piercing first of all just always piercing that came in clutch too because whenever you're resting your opponent's stuff and swinging at them you can use bond show to not only uh kill, clear their board but also give them damage in the process and his main skill is when attacking if this digimon attacks your opponent's run with 12,000 dp or more this digimon gets power plus 7,000 and security plus two until end of turn this card should be an sr with how busted it is the fact that it's an uncommon is honestly just insane i love playing it in green i'll probably play it in green for as long as i can rounding off our level sixes we have of course mega gargamon and Pokemon as our sort of one of level sixes now normally i'm not the biggest fan of playing one ofs in digimon right now because of just sort of how you draw cards and stuff in this game but because we dig through our deck a lot using our digivolve skills and we have cards like togemon in our deck to kind of search these boys out i felt like it was more okay to play them in this deck than other decks so I decided to go for it, and they both do serve similar purposes. They both can rest stuff and sort of stun them for the active phase, which is super nice, um, but they do it for like different reasons. So Mega Gargamon, you kind of rush with your opponent using cards like Hidden Potential on downloads. That way you can get a really cool plus security beater in play slash uh, just kill whatever they're trying to set up before you get into your Sarismon. So that's a really nice kind of function of this card. Pokemon's more of like an oh crap survival card that you use against your opponent in the late game to not die during their turn slash kind of switch the game back in your favor and sort of get the tempo back going for yourself. I did actually use this card to win against a uh, rookie rush deck which is super hype um, another thing you can do with it is just kind of secure game by resting and staying rested your opponent's blockers you can honestly play some really cool mind games with this card if they don't know you have it but i will say as much as i love Pokemon and i think is a really powerful card the fact that um he is an on play card and not a digivolve card actually really hurts him because our whole entire deck is built around digivolving and if you ever digivolve in Pokemon, you'll know that it just sucks and you don't really want to do it because you lose the best part about this card so not having that synergy kind of does make this card a little bit less appealing for me moving forward i might just test playing two gargamon instead of playing the Pokemon at all because frankly this card came in more clutch than this one during the entire tournament but there are moments where this card literally saves the game for you so i just am not sure which one is better for now all right now that we got our hefty 45 count of digimon done let's talk about our five option cards two flower cannon and three 
hidden potential discovered so let's talk about flower can first this was originally the best option card in green being able to rest all your opponent's digimon on security effect is really good for saving you games and just being able to generically rest your opponent's digimon during your turn is really good for resting blockers for going in for game slash getting rid of some pesky things your opponent is trying to set up in the early game honestly this card came in super clutch for me because there are moments where you don't have serismon set up that you still want to control your opponent's board and this card allows you to do that okay now that the opening act is dealt with let's talk about the main star of the show hidden potential discovered the most broken option card in green probably the most broken option card in the game uh let's be honest the zero cost main if one of your green digimon would digivolve this turn you may suspend rest one of your digimon to reduce the memory cost of the digivolution by five this is insane unless they make a digimon with a digivolution cost of six in green this card will always see play it is absolutely insane and on top of that it does have a security skill security skill add this card to your hand that security skill is the reason why i felt okay to cut the fourth copy of this card for an extra copy of level fives because no matter where this card is in the game whether it's in your deck or in the security you have the potential to see it there is no way that you will not see this card if you dig hard enough uh three honestly felt like the perfect number i did want to try playing four i did play four at first but i decided to cut it for the extra digimon room and honestly i do not regret it i never didn't see this card when i didn't want to it's honestly super awesome but there you guys go that has been my first place green turbo download deck list for the digimon tcg set 3 format if you guys have any lingering questions please feel free to leave them down in the comments below or better yet hop into my twitch channel i do go live every tuesday thursday friday i spend a lot of time in just chatting and i play a lot of the digimon tcg and i love talking about it with you so come stop by ask your questions live and in person and hopefully get some answers from me link to my twitch down below as always but with that being said now that you guys know what cards are actually in this deck list let's see how broken it actually is by watching some of my games from this past weekend let's go all right boys and girls here we are i have the vod pulled up of my finals match against my boy g man to beaver fun fact he is actually playing a red omnimon deck that is right boys and girls i know the irony the one deck that i was worried about fighting against is the one that i have to play against if I want to get my first W. How poetic. <laughs> the game in particular that I'm going to show you guys is the second uh, game that we played of our series. Fun fact, I lost the first one because my hand was super dead and couldn't do anything for the first three turns. And eventually he set up a very powerful board that I was like, yep, nope, not being that. Concede, going on to game two. I want to get some rest. It was like 9 p.m. or something when we were doing this. And I was like, I'm tired. I don't want to play anymore if I don't have to. <laughs> But regardless of that first game concession, I'm still feeling pretty confident. I know what I need to do if I want to win this matchup. I just need to make sure that I can do it. Also, uh, Phantom Cub, thank you for that follow. <laughs> I always love when that happens during these videos. Uh, also, huge shout out to my boy Drago from the Discord server for not only hosting this cool tournament, but also for getting me this VOD. Hopefully, I can do well for you guys and show off some really good gameplay using my Sarismon deck. All right, boys and girls, we know what's happening. Let's go ahead and get this game started right now. All right, like I said, I am going first. I'm just setting my security right here getting my opening hand my opening hand looks really good we have two rookies two champions and a hidden potential no ultimates just yet but if i can see a togemon that could always change slash just the amount of draw cards i can see i actually like opening up with like evolve evolve call a dude slash just evolve call a dude because the more dudes you have in your play for your battle area the more things you can download later on um so if i ever do see some download ultimates i'll be able to accelerate my turn uh, that way his opening hand is pretty decent no ultimate either on his side and there we see the togemon so i will be able to kind of accelerate through my deck if i need to um but still no ultimate but like i said togemon can rectify that as you guys can see we're using timers uh for this tournament they are chess based so when your turn's over you pause it when your turn's going uh your opponent goes mine's going right now because i've got to do it during my opening turn so i'm trying to let it go for like 10 seconds and then pause it yep right there so we see him evolve into that Beomon on a GG Mon. He has no ultimate. Like I said, he's going to go straight into Greymon. That's really the best play he could have gone for. Kind of staying in the raising area slash nursery area and just camping in there until you get to Onimon is usually what these decks kind of do. I'm just going to play a Ruramon and pass my turn. Like I said, I'm, I don't mind going wide because it'll give me some download synergy later on. Plus playing a Ruramon is just really nice because if he ever, because if he ever does call like another level four and rest, I can just swing into it. Uh, there we see the Skull Greymon. Not the most ideal level five he wants to see because it gives me the ability to get like i don't know uh flower cannon in response to it if he ever brings it in the active or the battle area so let's see what he chooses to do here if i was him i would just leave it in the raising area to evolve but he's going to be promoting what's he going to do he's going to kind of fall straight into it 
like I said, it does open him up for some potential if I do have flower cannon in my hand, but maybe he's just banking that I don't have it in my hand slash that I don't draw it. If he does go for it, he's debating really hard here what to do. He's gonna instead go wide, not a bad play at all. Um, if I do somehow get into a Ceres Mon, this turn it can be pretty devastating. There we see the download card, very, very powerful for me. I have the level five. Uh, there's also a Gargamon right there as well. Ooh, I wonder if I'm gonna use that this turn. I actually don't remember how this game went here, so. Let's see, judging by my hand, going for that Gargamon seems pretty cool. The rest, the Greymon, um, I can get into it by going for download and then by going for hidden potential slash just hard playing it for three. I don't think that's a bad play either. There we see the Boncho Stingmon coming into my hand. That's a lot of value for us for sure. Yep, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna drop the hidden potential and drop the Gargamon. Very, very nice. Rest that for free. Feels really good. And then just end my turn by going for Togemon maybe on the Aurorumon so that way I can add more cards to my hand potentially. And then just for next turn, yes, yes, we see me doing that exact thing. I love how I'm doing the same plays uh, even here when I'm in the Champion's Cave. Uh, there we see the Sarismon, really good pickup off of Togemon, and I match my hand, putting the rest on the, on the bottom of the deck. It honestly never matters what you put in the bottom of the deck, by the way, so just put them on the bottom of the deck. It never matters the order. Um, going back to his turn, he still only has one memory, but now I have a Mega, a Togemon, and an Argamon coming up on the next turn. Now you can see kind of the power and advantage a card like Hidden Potential can get for you, and you can see kind of why he might have been just like okay with keeping his Skull Greymon in the Raising Area and evolving up to uh, it from there. But you can see I'm kind of punishing his reason, not his reasoning for not doing that. Um, I think next turn I will make a misplay that I'll be sure to point out to you guys. But for now, let's go ahead and watch what he's doing. Evolving Bio, swinging in with the Monodramon. No clue why he's doing this. He's just kind of losing cards at this point. I understand wanting to be aggressive so you can close up the game faster. But doing it this early just feels like a waste. You just lost that unit for no reason. It could have become a champion later on, like a blocker. It could have gotten you a way to kill my little dudes if they ever come out in the future. I, I, I never like... Like, unless you have a big, big dude, I never like being super aggressive. And oh, he's going for the Terror Force. Okay, this game is definitely different than I thought. He's giving me seven memories. So here you're gonna see me probably pop off because if you give a green deck seven memory with seven memory, if they have two cards in play, they are going off. I'm just gonna quickly uh, get the Togemon to clear out that Greymon, just get it out of the way. That was kind of a misplay. I should have actually done all my draw skills first before uh, going in for an attack. I normally am a big, big creature of making sure you draw and see as many cards as possible before you start attacking. But I just wanted to make sure that the first thing I did was get rid of that Greymon. I don't want to be any funny business. I don't want to do any shenanigans just yet until I know that that threat's out of the way. So it may have been a misplay, but I, it doesn't really punish me. That misplay it just kind of is like a mis misplay of sequencing, if that makes sense. There we go straight into Rabidmon. Um, I have a big, big power gainer here in the form of Rabidmon plus Gargamon plus uh, Minomon. So I can pretty much swing over everything. I'm going to go into uh, Agumon. I'm going to go into Mr. Kabuterimon. I'm going to probably rest download into Blossomon. No, I'm going to keep the Blossomon in my hand. I think my reasoning for that is to have the option to evolve into certain other things in case he has like another Terra Force in his hand or just wants to be kind of grinding because I can tell that he's kind of dead drawing right now. Not really having much champion slash much anything else and i, uh, and, and I want to be more secure in my board and like i said there it is the terror force uh making sure i have options to build up on the next turn is a big deal losing that losing that serious mon does hurt but my hand can respond very nicely again popping off is always a possibility there's two flower cannons in my hand now that's kind of a yikes because i only have two that means there's none of my security that's always a sad sight to see there you see the flower cannon on the Biomon. I'm now gonna swing into the Biomon. This Togemon is just clearing boards, boys and girls. I'm now gonna not swing. I'm gonna rest for the download, obviously. Um, it, it looked like I was swinging, right? But no, I wasn't. I was just uh, flashing for the Blossomon. Um, here we see me going for Terrorion uh, to have the ability to download into two, giving him only one and getting back up to a Sarismon. And unlike last turn, now he has no more Terror Force. He's not gonna be doing that again. He does get the champion though. So once he evolves in this Biomon, he can evolve straight into Greymon and start building up something in his raising area. This is the scary thing about uh, Animon right now is that thanks to the inclusion of Blitz Greymon and Alter S, Red Animon actually has a lot of comeback potential in the form of board wipes and the Digivolve, so you never really can count them out until it's over. That's why I'm being super cautious with my board right now and not going in until I know I have game. Um, I might go in this turn though, just for the advantage of just keeping my Sarismon rested and I'm pretty confident it won't die. It's a 13K body. Um, unless there's an Animon sitting in there, it's not dying. I'm just gonna evolve into Woodmon and pass my turn no reason to do anything else all he has again in his hand is that skull greymon um he's just gonna hard play it and keep his greymon in the raising area at that point i would have just brought up the rise of the greymon but keeping it safe from my download shenanigans i think makes sense he obviously has no idea that i don't have any in my hand but i can obviously get some if i need to uh speaking of which there's one right there but i still have the ultimates though so i can't really get value for it yet 
um i do have woodmon though but here's the sucky thing about woodmon is that if i do evolve into it i lose my terriermon but I, i'm not seeing any biomons from him and that's the only real memory gain this deck has so i'm not gonna worry about it too much I'm gonna be a bit slow here and again I, I just draw into another woodmon this is why i think woodmon's kind of bad in the deck right now like i'm not really needing it at all i do have the flower cannon though to respond to his skull Greymon, so that's actually really nice that's in my hand had it been a download card though it would have been the same exact thing so um either way that skull Greymon was dying i'm gonna go straight into playing an argomon here from my hand and now my board is just getting super wide it's within lethal range already um so unless there's a terror force or a gaia force in that security area my opponent is dead on the following turn so he needs to play some blockers and even then i can play download cards obviously to get rid of those blockers so i'm in a very commanding position offensively um but whether or not he can deal with that we're about to see right here um a really cool thing he could have had here if he had like a two drop evo uh for level five would have been go into blitz Greymon. but the best thing that could do for him is just you know de digivolve my Sarismon, I would still have offense game on board, so it wouldn't like save him, but it could be an interesting way to sort of stop me from having a retaliation if he does have the Terra Force. And there we see the hard play of the uh, Cordramon. I accidentally flipped my deck instead of drawing my card, it's no big deal. There we see a Puppetmon top deck, not gonna help us here. What I really wanna dig for is a download card. Once I see a download card, the game is over. I draw, it is a Terriermon. I have no download cards in my hand and no ultimates, so I can't actually get rid of that blocker so i know i can't go in for a game so i swing my sarismon and i think i just play the terriermon and i pass i give him one i make it impossible for him to get up to mega and i just pass my turn uh that was really good otherwise i probably would have uh, if i didn't draw that terriermon i would have just passed and given him three which would have been super scary for us because then he could have potentially built up all the way to mega and had like a response to us but i was able to uh choke him at one and kind of guarantee myself game here on this next turn unless he can get another blocker in play which we know from his hand he cannot there we see the evolution into the Lava Garadamon, giving him the one. I draw for turn, I stand, I do my thing. Also, I have zero Argamon in play. All my Argamons have died or are on blockers right now. I'm swinging in with my Sarismon. There is a Biomon. I swing in probably with Togemon next, because it's the most useless one on my, on my board right now. Yep, and then I go in. This Togemon honestly was putting in so much work this game. It killed two things and is swinging in for a big blow. I forget what the dispute is right now. Uh, maybe he was just like asking a question about how strong it was, I think. I'm um, swinging in for five again with my Kabuterimon. I have three attacks with this, even if this card is going to be a uh, Terra Force, the game is still over. It's a Blitz Greymon. I swing in for a game with Woodmon, and that is the GG. That was a very commanding win on our side. Even though in the late game, we kind of dead drew in terms of ultimates, we were still able to build a very, very commanding board because uh, of all the early game control we had against our opponents. Moving on to the third game me and him played. All right, boys and girls, here we are for the third game against me and Beaver. He is now choosing to go first using his red Onimon deck. He hatches. Uh, he's going to evolve and draw one using the Majamon, and he does have that T. Sorry, he does have that Tamer tie in his hand. Uh, whether or not he chooses to play that this turn would be interesting to see. He's just going to go for that one drop. Uh, Dark Tyrannomon. Yes, he was kind of debating it there for a second. Uh, I'm going to take my turn. I'm going to stand. I'm going to draw on Evolve. I'm going to head and go. Probably going to play that Kabuterimon and then play the Aruramon from my hand. Like I said, I like going wide as early as possible with this deck to get the download synergy in the mid game. And there you see me going for it right there, playing the Aruramon and passing the turn. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if he just goes to that hard play of tie right here and just passes the turn for that. Keeps his dude safe and gives him a really good way to gain memory every single turn. The problem I have with that is that it basically gives me the excuse from every turn here on out to play as many cards as I want to and give you through memory in the process. Like that, that's the really cool thing about those tamers for your opponent and kind of the really bad thing for you when it comes to playing the memory tamers that is, is that it gives your opponent a reason to sort of not care what kind of cards they're playing as long as they give you three instead of one memory during their turn. So while that while those cards can be very nice for you, they're also very nice for your opponent. Definitely to keep that in mind for sure. And he, he's either gonna go for the Hoamon or go for the Tai. What is the decision here? Hoamon or Tai or Monodramon? And he goes for the Monodramon. Okay, I'm interested to see what that, what what that decision was. Um, maybe he was like afraid, like because it is possible for me to go like uh, all the way up to Sarismon uh, on this turn because what you do is you would go um, you would go rest download evolve draw and then you and, and then you play another two drop from your hand and then you play hidden potential to evolve into sarismon for free and then you swing in after downloading again from your hand potentially uh against your opponent it, 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 it's it's a lot of cards in my hand but apparently he was afraid of it uh, that could have been a misplay on his side though not not just going for the hoamon right there um obviously though if he did go for hoamon i would have responded by playing different differently as well made it kind of 
I, I would have made myself like Onimon proof essentially where I had like a bunch of different cards in play unless he had Onimon Alter S in hand I wouldn't have been punished and as you can see while he does have Ho-Omon he doesn't have Alter Onimon so responding so like just like leaving a Ho-Omon in play for turn for turn for turn is kind of not the best thing in the world especially if he wants to evolve that ground Dramon into a Blitz Greymon but I'm just gonna play another Rurumon and pass my turn there we see the Gigumon top deck not better than the Agumon obviously but he goes to the Biumon instead probably to get the um the memory on the next turn because being able to play that for free on the evo and then bring it up and get the free memory is kind of a, a, a nice way to get a plus one um i wouldn't be surprised this turn if he goes for the tie here just for that easy memory every single turn that easy evolution every single turn plus saving the hoamon for later so you can get plus two security attack with it thanks to the tie might be better than playing it now let's see what he goes for here uh i'm not sure what his option yeah so he's gonna be going for the tie here gonna give me the two memory um, that's cool. Like I said, it just kind of frees me up to kind of play however I want now as long as I give him three instead of one. I'm gonna evolve with with the Galimon, get that draw plus one into my hand. I'm gonna try and go for the yes for that flower cannon. Now my commentary, by the way, guys, is swinging for se six. It's swinging for six because of the evolution. I realized this. It's not swinging for seven. I thought it was actually at first, but luckily I do have the hidden potential. I can now evolve into Rabbitmon for free. Rabbitmon is now seven thanks to my Agumon. It, it, well, it's, it's actually eight thanks to Kabuterimon and Agumon. So now I swing over it and his thing is dead. So that's a really good for me to, again to control his board, even though I don't have Sarismon in my hand. Thank you, Flower Cannon, for being awesome. It might have been a waste of my hidden potential, honestly. I, I kind of didn't need to do that this turn. I could have waited, but that control right there was super nice. I'm going to make a really weird play here and go for the Mega Gargamon. This is kind of a play of like aggressiveness because I have no Sarismon in my hand. So for me to continuously kind of control him isn't really possible right now. So I kind of want to just like get in there and start dealing damage. And so the fact that I can have this really awesome plus two security attacker on my next turn just to get in his security is super nice. It's pretty buff, by the way, too. It's currently the stats are 13, 14 uh, right now with plus, two security, with plus two security and thanks to my Argamon, I get a plus one memory during my turn. So it's really, really good. And all I do is give him one more memory and all he has is rookies. So I felt like it was a really good play offensively and pressuring wise against my opponent. Uh, here we see him not really being able to do much. He has no ultimates in hand, so we can't get all the way to Mega. He's gonna go for the Biumon apparently instead of the uh, just uh, Evo into Greymon because he doesn't want to evolve this Biumon. Um, I'm kind of punishing him for not going for an Agumon last turn essentially. He's gonna be swinging and it is actually dead. So he gets the plus one memory going to five. I'm not sure what that does for him though, honestly. It kind of felt like a waste of a perfectly good evolution there. He's gonna play another Biomon and then another Biomon giving us the one. I stand up and of course get six. Now this is where I think I, really, I make a really bad misplay in terms of sequencing of attacks. And I think you're gonna see it right here. I think I actually swing, yeah. So I swing into the Aruramon. I swing in with the Aruramon first at the Monodramon. So now my Gargamon actually loses plus security attack because it only has it when the Digimons are at rest. That was kind of a big misplay for me, but I will say, I think the thought process I had at the time was to play around Terra Force. I think you're gonna see though in a second that it was kind of a big, big misplay to do that because I don't think he actually has it here. Um, so I'm kind of regretting that decision because I could have had one more damage this turn uh, by swinging in if I just swung with Gargamon first. Um, but it was kind of a misplay and I'm kind of regretting it <laughs> in the look back here. But hey, this is a good thing for you guys. Like I don't make perfect, I'm, I'm not perfect, right? I, I may have won this match, but it wasn't like a perfect game plan on my end. I definitely could have improved some little things here and there. So me noticing that now might help you notice it in yourselves later on. So definitely uh, make that note for yourselves to make sure you understand your attacks before you actually go in. And here we see the Greymon, and then I'm going to go for the Argamon, and then potentially the Evo into, yep, the Monster Stingmon. So like I said, guys, this is a perfectly good example of how this Tamer Tie freed me up to make this play, because now I get to just go, okay, Normally, what I would have done was just evolve Boncho Stingmon and give him the one memory, but now I get to evolve Boncho and get an Argamon in play during the same turn. Super good for us offensively. I now have game on board, actually, uh, which is a funny thing. And my Rurumon is 5k base, so none of these dudes can actually swing into it, which is actually super fun. And him forcing to use, and, and if he attacks with anything, Gargamon just gets plus security attack anyway. So he's in a really bad bind here uh, offensively, so we're kind of pressuring him so, so much, and he, and he needs to kind of get going, otherwise he's going to lose like real quick. Then we see another tie hitting his hand. That's another reason why I hate those cards. They're dead cards after you play one, <laughs> which is just like, oh, so bad to see. And there we see the Giyumon. He has double Dark Tyranimon, which is nice. He can clear my board of my rookies here. But like I said, I have uh, one, two, three, four. That is not enough to kill him now, thanks to those Dark Tyranimons, but it is enough to kill his board and do some pretty big damage to him, which is super nice. I think I make another misplay here in, in sequencing again. I kind of make the same mistake again. I, I didn't notice it the first time I did it, but I definitely noticed it the second time I did it. I think I'm gonna, 
I think I think what I'm, what I'm gonna do is attack with the Boncho first into this, get the get the penetrate or the piercing attack, and then swing with the Gargamon. It still has the plus two security, but like it checks less to kind of play around Terra Force potentially in the security. But I think it ends up being the incorrect order. Okay, no, I do I do do the, I do the I do do the correct thing. That's cool. Yeah, it's a Phoenix. He does die, but that's fine. Oh, okay, so yeah, that was the misplay. So the misplay wasn't really a misplay. It was kind of just like an unluckiness here. In hindsight, I should I should have swung with Gargamon first because then he wouldn't have died to that. But I think this card's a Terror Force. So I actually think it was the correct play to play around Terror Force, but the incorrect play to, pl to play around a big dude in the security. So while I may have made a misplay, I don't think it was one uh, that I actually noticed until right now. So let's see what that card actually is. So it's two, Biomon and Animon. Okay. Oh, okay. No, no, this is the misplay. This is the misplay. I, I wasn't playing around Animon being in the security. So if both Dark Tyrannomon were in play, this Gargamon was two, four, five. He was 16. Right now he's one, he's two, three, he's 14. So yeah, that was the misplay. The misplay was that my Gargamon is too weak to die to this. I think this card is a Terra Force though. Or am, or am I just like remembering incorrectly? No, it wasn't. Oh man, I'm just stupid. Um, uh, but here you see me swinging in. Now I'm just gonna play my Gollymon and then play something else uh, from my hand, like the Vegemon or something, and have game on board no matter how many cards he has in his hand. Unless he goes um, Cordramon plus Terra Force, we're gonna win uh, because he has no security and I'll have three attacks. So luckily for us, we, I was able to pressure him enough to get a really good pressuring board despite all those awesome security checks he has and despite my misplays of sequencing, um, I could have made it a bit more of a for sure win. Uh, but I'm just gonna play this, have three attacks. He has no way to control these three attacks slash have a way to protect himself uh, in the same turn he only has four memory that's not enough to do really much of anything i'm not going to lose because i'm at four security so we kind of had this game locked up given the board state here um and this is actually a really good game because not only does it show some misplays that i made but also it shows how this deck doesn't need sarismon to win i didn't play sarismon once this entire game and you see the kind of power i can have uh despite that just with the really powerful digimon we have like mega gargamon and boncho stingmon and here you see my opponent just realizing okay I can't really do anything. He goes up uh, and then he's gonna play the Terra Force. But like I said, I have the one of, of Gallimon just sitting here. He only has this and no way to protect himself. I win the game and that was it. GG, two, one victory for your boy here. Honestly, it was a really good series. Uh, good job there, Beaver, for doing so well with that awesome deck. We actually had a really cool conversation afterwards about our deck list and stuff. It was actually super sick. Uh, you're a super cool dude. Thank you again to Drago and everyone that made the tournament happen. Y'all are legit rock stars. Let's go ahead and hop over to me for an outro to this awesome video. Boom, there you guys go. That has been my green turbo set three deck list for the Digimon TCG, as well as a sort of commentary gameplay demonstration of the deck. Hopefully you guys did enjoy. Hopefully I was able to show off the sheer power and brokenness of this deck for you guys. Not only is green super advantageous and pressuring, but also has that really nice aspect of disruption and control that I love to have in my decks. It's honestly been a really big personal goal of mine uh, to win a tournament with green slash win a Digimon TCG tournament at all. And the fact that I get to do so well in so many different tournaments with all these different colors of decks means the world to me and showing off to you guys how diverse and really cool this game can be with the different archetypes and colors within it. Hopefully you guys did enjoy. If you did, be sure to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel and click that bell for notifications so you know when my videos go live for you. And be sure to leave a comment down below what deck list you wanna see from me either for the set 1.0 format for the Digimon TCG English or the set three format for the Digimon TCG JP, let me know. I would love to see your suggestions. And if there's anything in this video that you wish to discuss with me further or you want to elaborate more on, please feel free to follow me over on Twitch. I do go live every Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. I spend a lot of time in just chatting and I love talking about this game with you guys and answering y'all's questions. Links to my Twitch down below, as always. And with that being said, I've been True Champion Steven. Please be sure to work hard, rest easy, and live well. And I will see you all next time. Peace.